Hey there! Did you know that bubbles and cell membranes have a lot in common? Today, I'm going to show you how to make your own bubble soap film and its properties that make it seem so much like cell membranes. There are trillions of cells that make up your body. Each of those cells are surrounded by a cell membrane, also called the plasma membrane. Now, why are they important? Not only do they hold the cell's shape, they guard what comes in and out of the cell. The membrane is semi-permeable, meaning they act like gatekeepers, allowing only select substances to pass through. But how do they do this? How do these membranes decide what and what aren't allowed to pass? Well first, let's zoom in and take an even closer look into the cell membrane. As you can see here, there are two distinct rows that make up the membrane. It is called a lipid bilayer, basically two layers of these V-shaped objects called phospholipids. They kind of look like a person with no arms. Anyways, the head of this person, or lipid, is what we call polar or hydrophilic, meaning water-loving. The tails of this lipid, or legs of this person, are what we call nonpolar or hydrophobic, meaning water-hating. Looking at the phospholipid, which part is bigger? The head or the tail? You're right, it's the tail. This is part of the membrane that determines whether certain molecules are allowed to pass, the actual gatekeeper. Molecules with similar chemical properties as the tail, meaning nonpolar ones, can go through. For big polar ones like the head, those can't pass. In other words, the same materials as the membrane may go through. The nonpolar membrane allows nonpolar to pass. Polar or water loving, on the other hand, cannot. All right, I think we're ready to move on to making bubbles now. Okay, time to gather your materials. What you're gonna need is two and a half cups of water, a fourth cup of dish soap, a half teaspoon of glycerin. You can find this at your local pharmacy store like Rite Aid, or you can order one through Amazon. And a tray, and I'd say four straws. What you're gonna do is mix the water, dish soap, and glycerin into your tray, and use your straws and make a square contraption out of it that I will show a picture of in a moment. Okay, so here's what we're gonna make. The square straw contraption that can fit inside the tray. What you're gonna need is four straws and scissors. My tray is a bit smaller, so I'm going to adjust the straw sizes to fit inside. Um, to do this, I'm just going to trim the edges. And then cut off about like an inch or so. Okay. So, some shorter straws. To make this, I'm going to bend all of them to L shapes. Like so. So you have your four L shapes. I'm going to take the longer end that wasn't bent and cut a little centimeter at the edge at the bottom. Like that. You can see right there. And I'm going to do this for the other four. I mean three. Okay. So now the little cut edges that you put, you're going to bend them inwards a little to help squeeze inside the other hole of the straw. And then just push in. Like that. And then you're going to keep going until you make a square. So the other one side with the little cut edge, you're going to put it with the side that wasn't cut and just squeeze it in. Okay. And then your last one, you're going to connect the whole thing together. Ta-da! 
a square. You can adjust it around and adjust the lengths too. You can push it in more if it doesn't fit into your tray. Okay, now that you have your glycerin, your soap, and your water all into your tray, you're going to get a straw contraption like this, a rectangular straw. And as you can see right now, the soap film is on there. As you can see, the colors. Okay, look. And now it's gone. Ta-da! So what we're going to do is you're going to put it in gently like this. And you're going to pull the straw up really slowly so that the bubbles, or the big soap film bubble, will appear onto it. Now we're going to test out the first theory, whether objects can go through or not. First, let's put your little dry, make, your, make sure your pinky is dry. Try pu pushing it through and seeing if the membrane will pop or not. Oh, mine just popped. Okay, let me do it. Okay. Now What do you think happened there? A dry finger and a wet surface. Those are two unlike objects, like the polar head and the non-polar tail. The polar objects can't go through, like my dry finger. But let's test it with a, a wet object. Let's make a new film. Okay. Now, I put a Q-tip. I wet it completely very wet and dripping, as you can see. I'm going to place it through the film and let's see if it pops or not, okay? As you can see, the film is still intact. The Q-tip, right between, and it's still intact. That one doesn't count, but as you can see, that means like objects can go through the membrane while unlike objects, like a pinky, can't go through. Remember when I said large polar molecules can't pass through the cell membrane? Well, there actually is another way. They require a special object called a channel protein to help cross the membrane. It's embedded between the two layers so that big polar molecules that are unlike the nonpolar inside can travel through. You will see this with our next experiment, where we will try passing dry objects through the bubble membrane. So we can also do it with this straw. I got like a really fat straw like this and cut it into a little section like here and we're going to test out the transport tra transport proteins with the straw instead of the string because it might be a little difficult by yourself so i wet the straw completely and right here now i have it placed inside the membrane and the channel protein right here is complete there's no um, membrane inside the straw this allows for any object dry or wet polar or non-polar to pass through I'm going to use this dry q-tip and place it through the Ta -da! okay so here's another way to do it it's a bit harder but you can use a thread that's really really thin tie it into a circle and create your protein channel after wetting it, you can place it onto the membrane film and pop it in the middle like I did. It creates a perfect circle shape that's cool to see. It demonstrates that a channel allows almost anything through, dry or wet, polar or non-polar. This took me a couple of tries, so don't get too frustrated if it doesn't work. Have fun, good luck, 